so if you're in calculus one uh, for many schools at least where I live uh, this is really the last section you're going to cover uh, just u substitution uh, or just called uh, the book calls it integration by substitution so congratulations for reaching the last section of calc one uh, you know if you still have more to go or you know you're in calc two right now then we're just going to be talking about integration by substitution in this one so let's go over this so u substitution is is really just a technique for evaluating integrals and in my last video that i uploaded um just on it was like on uh, introducing integrals part two really what you have to do is you know what we did was we did algebraic manipulations and stuff and to be able to take integrals because remember integrals can really only work between addition and subtraction but let's say for example i was faced with this monstrosity right here and i cannot do an algebraic manipulation on this i cannot do a trig one i can't do anything right you know i, I there's nothing i can do and this is really tricky right because remember what i said even before there is no product rule for integrals there is no quotient rule there is no chain rule you can only move between addition and subtraction you can bring constants out front and from there, you know, you're very limited on what you can do. And so you really kind of have to be clever with doing this. And I'm not really going to go much into the theory behind you substitution. It's really a thing you learn by practicing. And that's what I'm going to do in this video, or at least attempt to do. So here's the idea. If I had an integral like this, you know, you see, no matter what, I cannot make this addition and subtraction. You know, I, there, I can't do any manipulations whatsoever to make this nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, let this variable called u, let u equal 5x plus 7 in this case. And again, l deciding what u should be, there is no definite answer. You know, I, I there is no secret trick. You know, you kind of have to just be able to pick it wisely. And, you know, as you do examples, you'll get better and better at it. Um, oftentimes, you want to pick u so that the derivative of it is somewhere in your original integral. So the idea is this. We want to use this variable u, right? And we want to replace all of our x's in here, including the dx, with u's and du's. So let's first do this. So you always say let u equal something. u can be anything you want. It could be this whole rad 5x plus 7, or it could be uh, just 5x plus 7, or it could be 5x. It doesn't matter. There, you can be anything you want it to be. You just have to pick it so that it works out nicely. Once you have your u then, then you take the derivative. So du over dx, while well, the derivative of 5x plus 7 is just 5. And then you multiply both sides by dx. So du equals 5 dx. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by 5, and you'll see in a second, and I get 1 fifth du is equal to dx. Now let me show you why I did that. So remember what I said. I said that you want to get all of these x's gone and you want them to be u's. Well, you can see here that this 5x plus 7 right here, that's just u, right? I said let u equal 5x plus 7, so that's taken care of. And then this dx, this dx, well, what is that? That's just. I said, hey, dx is 1 fifth du. And that works. Remember, I said all of the x's and dx's must be replaced with u's and du's. So this works too, right? So now let's rewrite this. Let's rewrite this. So instead of u, right, instead of, or sorry, instead of 5x plus 7, I say u. So it's red u times, well, what was dx? dx was 1 fifth du. And now, you know, proper notation then, or just make it easier, is you always just bring the constants to the front of the integral, or you can bring them outside, it doesn't really matter. Um, and then your du is always at the end, and that's really all there is. So then, you know, now we can evaluate this integral like we normally have. So if I did this, you know, this is the same thing as 1 fifth u to the 1 half. 
and then remember you you add one so one half plus one that's three halves and you divide by that so we would get two fifteenths u to the three halves plus c okay now what's our last step because there's there's one last step here we started with x's right our original integral was with x's we only started using u's to help us integrate this right Th that was just a tool so our answer must be in terms of x's again and not u's so 2 fifteenths well what was u u was just 5x plus 7 Be so because you know because this u right here that's the same thing as 5x plus 7 as you can see up over here u is 5x plus 7 so I would say 2 fifteenths times 5x plus 7 to the 3 halves plus c and that's all there is to it so one that's one golden rule to remember um don't forget to plug the x's back in don't leave your answer as 2 fifteenths u to the 3 halves plus c because we started with x's our answer must be in terms of x's uh something stupid my my old professor once said is that you know one way to remember to do it is that you know what we did was hey you know i used i used you i used you to get back to my x so i used you to get back to my x that's a stupid way to remember it but if it helps it helps right that's it helped me when i first learned it so again used you to get back to my x so two, our answer is then two fifteenths uh, times 5x plus 7 3 halves plus c so u substitution is really just a technique for evaluating integrals you know it's it's just one technique out of many you're going to learn um, and again we use it we only used it here is because you know there was no addition and subtraction there were no like nice integrals you know like secant squared or something right that, that, that you can't just say it's tangent right that's just tangent you know this wasn't a nice integral there was no addition and subtraction and when that's the case you always want to try u substitution first thing you see you always want to try u sub first thing as your as your first weapon in tackling these integrals so let's do another example and hopefully it'll make a bit more sense and again you know you just want to practice 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 with a uh, u substitution it's definitely a great technique that's gonna last you way into calculus too so let's try another one let's say i had Okay, the integral, so let me try again. So the integral of cosecant squared x over 1 plus cotangent x and with respect to x. Okay, so what should we do? Well, I need to let u equal something. I need to let u equal something here. Um, and what I want it to be is I want my u to be so that when I differentiate it, the result is somewhere in the integral. So I'm going to say that u should be 1, 1 plus cotangent x. Okay, and you'll see why I picked that in a minute. So let's do this. So du over dx. What's the derivative of 1 plus cotangent x? That's just simply negative cosecant squared x, right? Okay. And then now I'm going to multiply both sides by this dx. So negative cosecant squared x dx. And now we're kind of getting somewhere. You see, I took the derivative, right? And I multiply by the dx. And you see like, hey, this is, this is in my original integral, right? Because I let u equal this portion. And the, its derivative is in my integral. So that's how I know I did this right. So, but there's one more thing. Notice how this is a positive cosecant squared x dx. But the, over here, it's a negative. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by a negative 1 or just switch the negative over. So negative du equals cosecant squared x dx. Now what's going to happen is that this portion what will this portion get replaced by? It gets replaced by negative du, because cosecant squared x dx is du. 
So I'm going to do exactly that. So negative du up here. And then what was 1 plus cotangent x? Well, that was just u. Okay. And then you could rewrite this as this as well, so it's a little more obvious to you. You could say negative 1 over u du. Okay. Same thing. These both mean the same thing. Now we just integrate like we normally would. Remember the natural log of, or sorry, I almost gave you the answer. The integral of 1 over u, that's simply just uh, ln, absolute value of u, natural log. Uh, since there's a negative though, so I'm just going to say negative natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. Now what do we do? Well, remember we started with x's. Our original answer, our original uh, problem was in x's, so our answer must be in x's as well. So instead of this u, I'm going to make it in terms of x's. Well, what was u? u was just 1 plus cotangent of x right over here, right? So instead of u, I'm going to put 1 plus cotangent x plus c. And that's it. So again, you know, picking the u is obviously the hardest part. But after you do it a couple times, it gets better. It gets it gets a little easier as time goes by. OK, so let's try another one. Let's, let's do um, let's do another one. OK, so let's let's make this a definite one. So OK, so let's say I had 0 to pi over 2 uh, cosine x sine of sine x dx. So what I'm going to do here is, you know, I want to pick my u so that the derivative of it is somewhere in this integral. So I'm going to pick sine x. And usually what the case is, honestly, is that it's usually, you know, what's inside of another function. You see, I have a sine sine x inside of another sine, it's usually the inner function of a composition. That's just, uh, it's not always the case, but it's a pretty good candidate. So, okay, so I'm going to say du equals, well, the derivative of sine is cosine, and I tack on the dx. And I'm just going to kind of do the shortcut. Remember before how I said du over dx equals sine x, and then I multiply both sides by dx. I'm just going to kind of shortcut it now, uh, where I just do both in one operation, you know, where I take the derivative and then I add the dx after it. So I'm just shortcutting it, make this a little faster. Okay, so now what happens? Well, note that I have a, this is cosine x dx, and do I have that in my integral, my original one? Yes, right? Cosine x dx, those will both get replaced with, um, with du, right? So this and this, these will both get replaced with this du. And then what about sine x? Well, sine x, this guy right over here, that's the same thing as u. See, because we said let u equal sine x, and then du replaces cosine x and dx. One last step. Because we're working with a definite integral, because we're working with a definite integral, you also have to change your limits of integration. Because 0 and pi over 2, these work for x's. But we're going to need new limits of integration that work with u's. So it's really easy to find this, though. So I'm just going to say like u top, just for my upper limit of integration, for or top limit uh, for u's. It's simply just u is equal to, you just plug it, you plug in the top, you plug in the upper limit of integration into whatever u is. And that's just going to be 1 u bottom, uh, u equals sine of 0, right? So I'm plugging in my lower limit of integration into this guy right here. Same thing I did the upper. You know, I plugged pi over 2 into this one, OK? So sine of 0, that's just 0. So those are my new limits of integration. You always want to change the limits of integration when you're making a u sub on a definite integral. OK, so now I'm running from 0 to 1, and so now I get sine u du. And again, you know, it's 
you could have put this du out front, but it's just proper notation for it to be at the very end. And so again, you know, the sine x got replaced with a u, and then cosine x and dx got replaced with a du, which is right here. Okay, and so then the the integral of sine, well, what's the integral of sine? That's just all that is is just simply just negative cosine u from one to zero. And remember before I said, you know, you have to go back to x at the end. Well, for definite integrals, if you already change the limits of integration like I did here, then you don't need to. So you, you won't need to if you already change the upper and lower limits, you're done right there. So now let's do this. So I'm just going to say negative cosine 1 minus, right, minus a negative cosine of 0. Negative cosine of 1, that's just some irrational, so I'm just going to leave it like that. Cosine of 0 is just 1, so minus a negative 1, that's just 1. So I get negative cosine 1 plus 1, and that is my answer there. So again, you know, use substitution, it's pretty tricky. Um, I'm going to be doing another video on this shortly that covers some more examples, uh, ones that are definitely a little harder. And, you know, if this is tri tripping you up, watch it a couple times and hopefully it'll start to make sense and just do a whole bunch of practice problems and you'll get the hang of it eventually. Trust me, it, it gets better from here. So at first it's intimidating, but just keep practicing, 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 and you'll be able to handle it in no time. So as always, thanks for watching.